people are lazy, people procrastinate. You just have to look around you and and can see. You know, people te have a tendency to just kind of sit there and, and let life passively go by. Uh, now, economists have kind of known this too. We we live in the world as well. But if you'd asked economists 20 years ago, you now what do you think about these propositions that people are lazy, that people procrastinate, and say, well, yeah, people do that in certain domains of their lives. But for the really important decisions in their life, where it's going to really impact their economic well-being, they're going to really be on top of things because the stakes are just so large, and people are self-interested enough that they're going to get their act together. And so what we're going to talk about today is some evidence on just exactly how lazy are people. How strong is this inertia in people's lives? And we're going to see that, it's, in fact, it's substantial. OK, so just to uh, kind of get things started, I want to uh, use this kind of example of a survey that I ran many years ago at a particular uh, company where we asked people, uh, you know, how, how uh, is your savings rate for retirement? Are you kind of saving about the right amount? Are you saving too little? Are you saving too much? And it turned out this company, the overwhelming majority of people thought that they were saving too little for retirement. Very few people thought that they were saving too much. So you know, if you ask them, what is the ideal savings rate uh, as a percent of your income, uh, people respond with fairly uh, sensible answers, about 14% of income. It's pretty in line with what, with what financial planners would tell you is, is kind of a sensible amount of savings to do for retirement. OK, so this is a domain where uh, there are no conflicts of interest. Right? People are saving for themselves. Uh, it is a highly important economic decision. You only get to do it once. If you screw up and you don't have enough savings in retirement, then you know, you're, you're not going to really have a chance to make that up. Right? So this is a domain where you would really think that people would be motivated, where people would would get their act together and uh, do the right thing. So the particular uh, kind of savings vehicle that we're going to examine is what's called the 401k. This is a US-based retirement savings vehicle. And it is sponsored by uh, many US companies for their employees. It's, it's considered a benefit that's provided for, uh, for the employees. And it's a benefit because it is a tax advantaged savings vehicle. So you don't get taxed on the money that gets put in until retirement. OK, so we saw in that prior survey that out of every 100 employees that were surveyed, uh, 68 reported their savings rate is too low. So what were they going to do about that? Well, 24 of those 68 said that they're, they were going to increase their 401k contribution rate uh, in the next few months. OK, so I'd say, well, that's, that's a, a start. How many of these people are going to actually do what they said? And we actually have administrative records from the 401k. So we, we can actually see, did these people follow through? In fact, only three of those 24 actually followed through on increasing their savings rate. So there's a huge gap between intentions, which were great, and the actual follow through. And we know that that's part of life. Okay, so here is a, a short description of two different enrollment regimes that you could have at a company. So you could have an enrollment regime where the default is not enrollment. In other words, what happens if an employee does nothing? What is the outcome? And traditionally, uh, in the US, the default outcome has been that you are not enrolled in the 401k. You do not contribute. So you do nothing. Your contribution rate is set to 0%. And you're told, if you ever decide that you want to get around to enrolling in the 401k, then call this number, go to this website, you need to take an active action in order to get enrolled in the 401k. Now, there's an alternative way of setting things up where the default is enrollment. So if you don't do anything by this deadline, then we will automatically enroll you in the 401k at this default contribution rate and at this default asset allocation. So if you do nothing, you're enrolled, versus if you do nothing, you're not enrolled. And traditional economic theory would say, that basically you should get exactly the same outcomes under both of these regimes because the cost of changing your mind and re registering your preference about your, your uh, kind of savings rate is minimal. And the stakes are so high here that everybody should be highly motivated to act promptly. And so here is a graph that is typical of the experience at a company when they change 
from default non-enrollment to default enrollment. So what you have on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, is time since hire. So how many months have elapsed since I joined the company? And on the y-axis, the vertical axis, you have the percent of employees who have enrolled in the 401k. And if you look at the gray series here, that is what happened to employees who were hired under an opt-in regime, where the default was not enrollment. You can see that basically after 12 months, you have about 70% of people who are enrolled, and they just kind of trickle in slowly over time. Now this company changed to a default enrollment regime, an automatic enrollment regime, and they started out by making the contribution rate 3% of your income. So you don't do anything, after 30 days, we're gonna automatically enroll you, and you're gonna be contributing 3% of your income to the 401k plan going forward. And you see that immediately, you get almost 100% enrollment in the 401k. Okay, so simply changing what happens when you do nothing has a huge impact upon participation rates in the savings plan.